Welcome to China Money Podcast. I'm your host, Nina Xiang. Sorry to move this Chinese New Year, so I wish every one of you a very happy Chinese New Year. Remember to go to ChinaMoneyPodcast.com to find out more information about the podcast. Our guest today is Robert Bloom, Managing Director at King Resources Asia Limited. He's also a professor at China Central University of Finance and Economics, and I'm talking to him today in Beijing. Hi, Robert. Welcome to the podcast. Yeah, thanks. So the IMF is predicting that China will become the world's biggest economy, bigger than the U.S. within the next ten years, and there are other people making pretty similar predictions. And you have said that will never happen. Well, there, first of all, the IMF is using a purchasing power parity weighting. Okay, so that's very optimistic. You know, it's more the story is more more like、uh, you know twenty thirty twenty thirty or beyond,、uh, and、uh, it's affected too by. Relative growth, as、uh, as the other countries' growth rate has、uh, has gone down, as the、uh, renminbi appreciates, and so on. But they may make the hurdle, the two, the IMF's defined hurdle of two thousand seventeen, but they won't, they won't go much beyond that. And uh, uh, for for two reasons, it's de- basically demographics.、Uh, so it's well known that uh, China's um, <clears throat> China's uh, uh, population growth will、uh, stop in about.、Uh, Ten years time,、uh, at the earliest, maybe within nine nine years or by twenty twenty.、Uh, so that puts you in a kind of Japan mode.、Uh, population growth is very important to drive normal economic growth. What do you mean by a more normal level? Yeah, normal growth means like、uh, you know a normal advanced economy three, four, five percent, not not nine percent, fifteen percent. Besides that, we have the rural to urban migration. That's responsible for about one and a half percent of population growth each year. Uh, so uh, now the urban de facto urban population is close to sixty percent. When the urban population reaches about eighty percent, that's considered stable point. So when that stops, that's the engine for super growth. In this case, it's happening in reverse.、Right? Rather than the engine for super growth. Stopping, so you would suddenly ratchet down to normal growth, and then population growth would stop, and then you have no growth. That means basically, within the present leadership, the next leadership of China, that will be the remaining extent of China's、uh, sort of growth phenomenon, or super growth, or China's economic miracle,、uh, short of any major changes or any major reform. So, what you're saying is that China's economic growth rate will be three to four percent. For the next ten years. Well, you have to take the super growth, which is like nine percent or ten、mm-hmm. percent, and take say you take the normal element from that. You're left with、uh, probably the same amount, so it's like half and half. So actually, the normal growth portion will will time out first, and then you'll still be left with that super growth portion, which is more or less would be the same as normal growth. And then that times out afterward when the migration stops, and then you're left with zero growth. You're left with the Japan. The combination of these two things, basically between ten and fifteen years, fifteen years is the outlier. At the end of that, there will be zero economic growth. Okay, so China will follow Japan's path to almost zero growth rate. And what can China do to avoid that? Resume economic reform, <clears throat> which has been on hold. Partly thanks to the financial crisis, you know. But before that,、uh, I, I sort of look at the bellwether, the 2007 stock market crash in November. That was the beginning of the end of the, you know, the easy easy phase. So we've had since,、uh, uh, you know, 2008 until now, we're kind of lost,、uh, almost a lost half decade.、Uh, there's been growth, but there's been certainly nothing in the way of reform. It's been basically everyone. There's a consensus. It's been backward moving. In terms of reinforcing the state sector, private companies have big problems. So the issue is,、uh, as soon as possible,、uh, because these other tools,、uh, you know, pan out. That you can't, you can't repeat them. You can't just keep, you know, adding money to the money supply. The government can use fiscal policy and spend money. It has plenty of money to tie things over for quite a while.、Uh, but、uh, what can save China from this de- destiny is, is. Is is internally generated growth from a vibrant economy and a pri- basically a privatized economy, less government intervention, less regulation. So you don't see the possibility that China will resume reform after the crisis is over. You can take that attitude. It's like when you're it's when, it's like when you're sick or when you have pain, you avoid the medicine. But actually, you have to take the medicine, which is painful when you're 
ill because if you don't, you're going to get it's going to get worse, and then you have bigger trouble. It's a paradox in life. When do major economic reforms happen? They never. They usually don't happen when countries are very well off because everybody's confident things are fine the way they are. Why rock the boat? Okay, so those are your long-term predictions. How about your near-term predictions? How do you feel the Chinese economy will do this year? Uh, mediocre. So we still, you know, we have, uh, you know, we have the, 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 you know, the growth issues. Uh, of course, the government will try to do. What it can maybe、uh, you know greater use of, of fiscal policy. Local governments will borrow money but through bonds and spend some bond issuance and so on and try to do that.、Uh, how much、uh, how、uh, financial reform accelerates? We don't know. What will happen to the property market?、Uh, as far as big、uh, hopes and expectations that a consumer economy is magically going to emerge, I think that's just that's a pipe dream. I wouldn't call it hard, you know, hard landing or soft landing, but maybe a kind of landing. The more,、uh, the the harder that is, the more likely you're going to have、uh, expert leadership. So, do you think China will fall into the so-called middle income trap? Eventually, if there's no major change, if there's that serious reform and that serious productivity improvement, that can drive wage and price increases that China needs to bring it to this stage of the world. Class economy. Japan could manage the arriving at zero growth because it was already an advanced economy at that point. The Japanese population can bear it. They're not out on the street. They're not complaining about lost hope and so on. They're already generally well off. But China, unfortunately, is going to reach this stage before it has achieved, you know, for its population that、uh, that high that high high、uh, high income level. So that's where, unfortunately, it does get. Stuck in this kind of middle income trap. Thank you so much, Robert. Yeah, thank you. That's today's podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. See you next week. <laughs>